Hi guys, today's project features 20 gauge twisted artistic wire. I'm using the silver plated. You could use any color that you wanted to or whatever it is that you have on hand. We're gonna make a cute little bracelet. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what we're working towards. We're gonna make a twisted wire center for our bracelet. We're gonna bundle that wire and then I'm using some faux suede lace for the length of our bracelet. So let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our twisted wire. Now I'm using mine in the dispenser pack has a great little way to to pull the wire out without it spinning out of control making a huge mess so that's the way I'm going to use my wire which means that I don't really have an accurate measurement for the wire I apologize for that because I am just using it right off of the spool okay you're going to need to find something that's about 25 millimeters around to use as your mandrel I'm using my nylon hammer just because that's what I have on hand and it's the right size but you could use anything that you've got around you and you are simply going to take your wire. You're gonna give yourself a little bit of a tail here. I don't know, that's probably about three or four inches. Hold that down with your thumb, and then you just wanna wrap around whatever you're using. You wanna wrap around about five times. And your wraps don't have to be super perfect. You could wrap around more or less depending on how thick you want your bundle of wire to be, but I like about five times. That gives a nice thick bundle. All right, and then you wanna leave yourself a longer tail on this end because we're gonna use this tail to bundle our wires together. So I went ahead and cut that off, set that to the side. Now very carefully you wanna slide your wire off of whatever you're wrapping around and hold it together with your fingers because you don't want to use, you don't want to lose that shape okay so I'm just keeping that all bundled together nicely between my fingers and the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to move this big long tail out of the way we're going to use it in just a second the first thing we're going to do is deal with the short tail so we're going to take the short tail and we're going to wrap around all of the wires about four times Okay, going through the center, one, two, three, four, just like so. Okay, so that's our initial bundle here. It's just going to keep our wires together as we continue to work, and it gets rid of that tail. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to trim off that tail, just what we have left over. Okay. And then I definitely want to come in with my pliers and make sure that there isn't anything sticking up to poke us. Okay. So now I'm going to use the rest of this tail. I'm going to flip this around a little bit. And we're going to need to make three more wraps. And we want to try to make these as even as possible. So I want to do a wrap here and a wrap at the bottom and a wrap here. Okay, so that we've got even spacing. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to kind of eyeball it and get it as close as you can. Okay, so my tail is coming this direction. I'm just going to move down a little bit and I'm going to wrap around. Okay, I've got about, there's my fourth wrap. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit so you can see a little bit better. There we go. So you can see I had my, my tail, my short tail here where we started wrapping, gone around, made another little wrap here. Our tail's coming out this way, guide it down. And we want our next wrap to be across from our original wrap. Okay, I'm going to come from the inside, just kind of following the direction of the wire that it's going. You don't want to force it to go one direction or another because then it's going to look a little wonky. You just want to kind of go with the flow with the wire here. Okay, so there's our wraps here. Oh gosh, you can't even see. I'm so sorry. Okay. And we're going to make our last little section of wraps down here directly across from this one. Okay. So I've got Okay. 
All right, so we have a nice little bundle of our twisted wire, which was super, super easy to do, but because of the twist in this wire, it looks really beautiful. You could certainly do this without twisted wire, but I just love the way that twisted wire looks, especially bundled together like that. Okay, so I've got my tail here. I'm gonna trim that off just like we did before. Come in with my pliers and make sure that there's nothing sticking up. Now, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and put this on your block and work harden it just a little bit with your nylon hammer, but it's pretty substantial. Four or five wraps around your mandrel is gonna give you a nice wrapped loop that's not going to move on you too much. Okay, so we've got our center portion of our bracelet ready to go. Now in the bracelet that I've already made, I'll show you, I have taken some beads and just made some wrapped loops and added some charms to that. You can skip this step, this step rather if you want to, but I just love the added extra dangles. So I do have some beads here that I'm going to add to this and some head pins. Now I won't do all of these on camera because you guys don't need to see all of that, but I'll show you the basics here. I've got an eye pin and I have some of these two millimeter silver beads that I used in my previous video. I'm going to thread one of those on to my head pin. I think I said eye pin a second ago, but I meant head pin. <laughs> my apologies. All right, and then I'm going to thread on one of my beads. Any bead that you want really makes no difference. This is up to you. Be as creative as you want to be. And I'm going to thread on another one of those silver round beads. All right, so for my charms that are going to go on this, I want my loops to be wrapped loops, but I want them to be rather large because I want them to be able to clear these wraps. So the loop itself is going to have to be on the larger side. So I'm going to take my pliers, grabbing that wire right above that top bead, and I'm going to bend 90 degrees just like so. Okay, now I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers and I'm going to grab that way back here towards the back of the pliers and go up and over. This is going to give me the largest loop. And I will take them off of the pliers here in just a second just to show you before I start wrapping that. So you can see this is going to be a large loop. All right, and, and that's what I'm going to need in order to clear all of this wire and these bundles. So I want it to, to have free range. Okay, now I'm going to slide this on just like so. You can see I haven't, I haven't closed that loop yet, but I'm going to. I'm going to come in with my pliers and hold on to that loop that I created. And I'm just going to go ahead and wrap that around. with another pair of my pliers. To create a nice little wrapped loop here. Okay, so that is ready to go. I'm gonna trim off this little tail here and you can see I've got a nice little dangle on my circle here of wire. Now I'm going to add a few more to this and then come back and show you and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, now you can see I have added all the rest of my beads to make some cute little charms that are hanging from our twisted wire ring. And we're ready to move on to the next step, which is adding the length portion of our bracelet. And to do that, I'm actually gonna use some of this faux suede lace that you can get from Beadalon. It comes in a bundle of a bunch of different colors. I'm using this green to mix with this kind of coral color just because it really reminds me of spring. And I don't know about you, but I have spring fever big time. So. This is really easy to do. We're just going to take this one section of our um, suede lace. I don't really, uh, faux suede lace, that's what it is, but we're just going to shorten that to suede lace because that is kind of a mouthful. So anyway, it's about a 10 inch section. We're going to take it, we're going to fold it in half and we're going to create a lark's head knot over one side of our 
little bundle here to do that I'm just gonna loop just like this and I'm gonna loop through okay pull that through and then pull all of that tight and you'll see we have secured our leather our faux leather suede lace our green leather <laughs> to one side of our loop okay <clears throat> now I'm just gonna leave that for now and I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side to match this is fairly quick so there's no reason to stop okay so we're gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing to the other side just create one of those larks head knots be careful not to get your charms in the way pull that through and actually whoops I did that one the wrong direction because I want them to match okay so once you have both pieces of your suede lace attached you can flip this over and you can add a dab of bead stringing glue to the inside of your knot in case you are worried that it's going to come undone this suede lace it usually grabs onto itself and doesn't come undone but just in case you could go ahead like i said and add a glab a, a glab a do a dab of glue <laughs> it's a friday guys my brain has already gone to the weekend <laughs> all right so i'm not going to add the glue because i trust this suede lace just like it is now we're ready to finish off the length of our bracelet so you want to make a measurement here like i said we had 10 inches on either side it's shortened up a bit because we did fold it in half but i need to have a seven and a half inch bracelet so to do that i want to make sure that my bracelet i'm going to put the ring of the bracelet i want the center of that to be at about three and a half inches okay so i'm just going to lay that out on my ruler and then with my fingers, I'm gonna grab a hold of that leather right where I need it to be. Okay, that's the length that I need. You want to allow about an inch for your clasp. So take that into consideration when you're measuring. I'm just gonna trim off that end. So as you can see, I'm doing one end at a time. I'll do the other end in just a second, but I, I trimmed both ends of that leather to match okay you want it to be the same length so that it'll lay nicely now I'm using one of these fold over cord ends and again you could use a dab of glue in this if you wanted to I'm gonna lay those two pieces of suede right into that fold over clasp and now I'm gonna fold the ends over to secure it and get that nice and tight so that it's not gonna come undone give it a nice little tug just to be sure but I folded over both ends inside the fold over cord end and that's the back here's the front so you can see it looks nice and clean and we're going to do the exact same thing to the other side we're going to make that measurement trim off and add our cord end okay so I have added both cord ends to either end of my bracelet and you can go ahead at this point and add your jump rings and your clasp if you want to I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'm going to show you what I have actually done to the other bracelet that I didn't do to this one just to kind of give you some design options okay so I'm just going to add my clasp I'm just using a four millimeter jump ring and a, la and a lobster clasp attaching that to the cord end I'm going to close that up I'm going to do the same thing to the other side and at this point your bracelet can be done but I like to add more beads to this before I consider it finished if you are not big on extra things hanging from your bracelet I know that a lot of people that have computer type jobs they don't like to have a lot of charms and things hanging down just because it gets in the way of their keyboard but if you do like that extra jangle to your bracelet i'm gonna open this one up so i can show you this one i added more beads on either side and you will also notice 
that I added a knot on either side before I attached my cord ends. Now the reason that I did that is because I wanted to keep all of the beads in one location. I didn't want them to have full range of the length of the bracelet. So I added that knot just to keep all of my little dangles towards the center of my bracelet when I have it on so that they don't all go towards the back. You can certainly do that before you make your cuts on your suede lace with your other bracelet. And you can certainly add some dangles to this one without the knots if you want to. I'm gonna do that and then we're gonna call it a day. And there you go. I have finished adding all of the beads that I wanted to to my bracelet. Got some cute little dangles and that beautiful green faux suede lace. So my bracelet is ready to wear. Definitely very reminiscent of spring with the color combination here. This one's a little bit more dressy with the brown and the coppers so you could go either way with this bracelet but that's it i hope you guys have enjoyed this project and i look forward to seeing you next time bye guys